Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In the previous videos we have learned about stationary anode x-ray tube, rotating anode x-ray tube. In this video we will be learning about certain topics associated with the x-ray tube. So we shall have a look into tube insert and vacuum, tube cooling, tube housing, filters, bre uh, sorry, beam restrictors or collimators. So let's move on to our topics. First, we shall have a look into tube insert and vacuum. So uh, in the video that I did on x-ray tube, we have learned about the components of the x-ray tube. We have learned that the x-ray tube is inserted inside a lead case. And uh, inside the lead case, we have uh, coolant oil and then the x-ray tube is made up of a glass envelope now this glass envelope is the tube insert so the tube insert or the glass envelope it is made up of a special type of glass and it is known as borosilicate glass commonly we call it as pyrex glass now what is the importance of this glass is that it can withstand high temperature and also it can act as an electrical insulator so we know that during the process of x-ray production, 99% of heat is generated and 1% x-ray is generated. That means there is enormous production of heat inside the x-ray tube. And so in order to withstand this high, um, uh, the excess amount of heat, uh, we are using Pyrex glass so that um, uh, it can withstand high temperature. And also this, uh, this particular glass, it acts as an electrical insulator. Now, what are the functions of the tube insert? The first function is that it absorbs x-rays in undesired direction. It maintains vacuum condition. It removes heat from the target and also it acts as an electrical insulator. So we have almost discussed most of the uh, uh, functions uh, in the x-ray tube videos. Uh, so I hope you know what will be the vacuum condition, why we need to maintain the vacuum condition. It's all discussed in the x-ray tube video. So please have a look into the uh, video where we have discussed stationary anode x-ray tube and rotating anode x-ray tube. So that was tube insert. Now we shall discuss about tube cooling. Okay. So um, as I said, there is enormous quantity of heat generated inside the x-ray tube and this heat it should be dissipated properly so as to maintain the proper functioning of the x-ray tube. So uh, the tar uh, in the target there is um, excess amount of heat production and hence uh, the x-ray tube must be equipped with a proper cooling system so as to remove the heat generated in the target area and conduct it to the external environment. So for this we are using uh, the tube cooling system. Uh, so the tube cooling system it is all about uh, dissipating the excess amount of heat that is produced in the target and this heat it will lead to the melting of the target material and therefore it is very important to remove the heat from the x-ray tube. For the proper heat dissipation, the target is made up of a copper block in which tungsten target is embedded. The copper block helps in proper conduction of heat. So as I explained already, the anode of the x-ray tube, it is made up of a copper block in which the tungsten button is embedded. Now why we are using copper block is because of its high or uh, because of its very good heat conductivity. That means the heat produced in the target is conducted uh, by the copper material and it is transferred to the external environment by means of conduction. Now because of this we are using the copper block uh, in the target material apart from the tungsten button. So uh, the main reason for using copper is because it is a very co a good conductor of heat. Now let's have a detailed look into how uh, the heat is dissipated from the target area. Uh, before I explain the cooling system inside the X-ray tube, I would just like to uh, I would just like to bring into your concern that there are four main methods of heat conduction. That means the transfer of heat can occur based on four methods. The first method is conduction. The process of conduction happens in solids by mutual contact. Then the second process is convection. The process of convection occurs in solids and gases. 
the third method is radiation so in radiation the transfer of heat occurs by means of electromagnetic waves the fourth method is evaporation um, in evaporation technique the heat is transferred by means of vapors now let's see how the heat is dissipated from the target of the x-ray tube now you can have a look into this flow chart we can see that the from the target area the heat is transferred to the insulating oil so we know that um, the glass envelope is covered uh, or it is uh, placed inside a lead case uh, and the lead case is filled with insulating oil. So the function of this insulating oil is that it, ha it acts as a coolant as well as an electrical insulator. So the heat generated in the target area it is transferred to the insulating oil by means of a process known as radiation. Then from insulating oil it is transferred to the metal case or the lead case by means of a process known as convection. Then from metal case the heat is transferred to air by means of a process known as convection or radiation. So this is how the excess amount of heat generated at the target area is transferred to the external environment and thus facilitates the proper working condition of the x-ray tube. Now we'll move on to our next topic that is tube housing. Tube housing means the entire x-ray tube it is placed inside a lead case and that lead case forms the tube housing. Now this tube housing it provides support, it uh, provides insulation and also it protects the glass envelope. The tube housing is internally lined with lead that is why it is known as lead case. Now why we are using lead lining is because uh, the lead it um, prevents the uh, leakage of radiation in undesired directions then uh, the shield facilitates radiation protection electric protection thermal protection and physical protection now this housing it is filled with a coolant oil or insulating oil this oil acts as a coolant as well as an electrical insulator. Now this tube housing it is earthed in order to prevent electrical shocks. Moving on let us discuss about the filters. Okay uh, so filters means these are the materials that are used in order to remove low energy x-rays and transmit high energy x-rays. So in the properties of x-rays we have learned that x-rays are polyenergetic that means the rays carries different energy. Some x-rays may be of low energy x-rays, some may be high energy x-rays. Now for image formation only high energy x-rays helps us in the image formation or only the high energy x-rays facilitates image formation. The low energy x-rays it will be absorbed in the body and it will only lead to biological changes that means the low energy x-rays does not help in image formation rather it is absorbed in the human body and leads to biological changes or biological effects and that is why the low energy x-rays is considered as an unwanted radiation. That means it does not help in any sorts of image formation and hence we remove it um, before uh, transmitting it to the patient. Now in order to remove the low energy x-rays we are using uh, filters. Filters can be of aluminium material or copper material. Now filters can be of or filtration. The process of filtration can be of two types. One is inherent filtration. The other one is added filtration. Inherent filtration means absorption of x-rays by x-ray tube and its housing. That means the x-rays are absorbed within the x-ray tube and the housing. For inherent filtration we use 0.5 mm to 1 mm thick aluminium material. Then we have added filtration. So added filters are the filters that are placed in the path of x-ray beam. Okay. So those filters placed in the uh, x-ray tube or its housing they are known as inherent filters and those filters that are placed in the path of the x-ray beam they are known as added filters. Now the total filtration will be inherent filtration plus added filtration. For added filtration we are using 1.0 mm to 1.5 mm aluminium material. 
Now let's discuss what are beam restrictors and collimators. So beam restrictors and collimators means they are the devices that are used to determine the area of radiation exposure. That means uh, we will be, sub, uh, we will be uh, supplying radiation only to the region of interest. For example, if you want to take x-ray of the hand, we know that hand is a small part and we need to give radiation only to the area uh, uh, so as to cover the entire bones of the hands. We don't have to give radiation to the other parts of the body. So for um, restricting the area of exposure, we use devices such as beam restrictors and collimators. Now let's see what are the beam restrictors and collimators. We have different types of beam restrictors that is aperture diaphragm, then cons and cylinders. The third one is collimators. Now, What is aperture diaphragm? It consists of a lead sheet with a hole in the center and this hole determines the size and shape of the x-ray beam. Now this aperture diaphragm it has a disadvantage that is it produces large penumbra that means it causes unsharpness of the image. So aperture diaphragm means it is a lead sheet with a hole in the center and the size of the hole will determine the size of the x-ray beam. The next one is cons and cylinders. The third one is collimators. Cons and cylinders they are used for dental radiography and skull radiography. Collimators they can be used for the radiography of any parts of the body. Now in this image you can see cylinder and cone. So these devices they will be attached to the window of the x-ray tube through which the x-ray comes out. Um, and this uh, cylinder and cone it will determine the area of exposure. That means um, the exposure area will be based on the um, area of the opening of the cone. So you can see here in the cylinder as well as in the cone. Um, so you can see uh, on the end that there is a um, there is a small area um, and only uh, through this area the x-ray will come out. That means you will see uh, only a small opening and only through the small opening the x-ray will come out. So these cylinders and cones they are used in the radiography of um, teeth that is in dental radiography and for skull radiography. Uh, especially for um, in skull radiography for uh, the extra examination of mastoids we are using cones. Now why we are using these devices we know that for dental radiography we need to cover only a small portion of um, uh, or we need to uh, take x-ray only of a small area. So in order to limit the area of exposure uh, we can use cylinders and cones so that the area of exposure will be limited uh, to the area of the opening of the con and cylinder so that the radiation will not be uh, or, or the other uh, body parts or other areas of the body parts will not be exposed. That is why we are using beam restrictors. Now in the second picture you can see collimators. So these are the collimator shutters. A collimator has four shutters. Here you can see Y and Y dash, X and X dash. Now this collimators or these shutters can be brought close to and they can be uh, set apart in order to determine the area of exposure. Uh, so inside this collimator shutters or inside the window uh, we will have collimation light. So we can switch on the collimation light and uh, we can see uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, see with the help of collimation light that how much area will be covered by radiation. Now if the area is large we can reduce the uh, radiation area by uh, bringing the collimator shutters closer. So we can bring y and y dash closer, we can bring x and x dash closer and we can adjust so that we can determine how much area, uh, area we need to expose um, uh, based on the body part being examined. Now if you are going to exam, uh, if you are going to take x-ray of hand we need only a smaller area of exposure. Now if you are going to take x-ray of a finger then the area of exposure uh, decreases again. Now, if you want to take a chest x-ray the area of exposure will be little um, will be more. If you want to take a x-ray of the abdomen again the area of exposure will be 
uh, larger so based on the part to be examined you can determine how much area should be exposed by radiation so we can use collimator light the collimator light will show that how much area will be exposed by radiation seeing the collimation light we can adjust the shutters of the collimators and determine how many area, how much area will be exposed by radiation so these are all about beam restrictors and collimators so in this uh, video we have discussed about um, certain topics that we have missed uh, when i explained uh, the um, stationary anode x-ray tube and rotating anode x-ray tube uh, so uh, i hope this video had been helpful for you so if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe and thank you so much for watching the video we will come up with more and more videos based on radiology topics Thank you.